Um, and our vision is really focused very much at a high level of, of realizing the promise of translational research. That is, focusing on taking you know, the kinds of research data we can produce today that we can build into databases, uh, centering that and focusing that on the GPS coordinate of the patients, as Paula Biak will tell you. Um, and in fact, you know, driving innovation in uh, therapeutic development. And what we're specifically focused on is using Transmart as the platform for doing that, building and growing a community around it, uh, and ensuring that we have the resources, uh, the people, the inspiration, the expertise that's needed to grow that platform. That's really what we're here and what we're about. Okay. I still can't, oh, can I make that button work? I guess I can. Um, so the foundation, when we go from a vision and a mission, it really comes down to a set of goals. And the goals drive what we're, what we're working to accomplish. The first is to establish and sustain Transmart as the preferred data sharing and analytics platform for translational research. That is, if we're all using the same platform with the same standards, the same semantics, we can much more effectively collaborate and share. And that's, that's the reason and purpose for this. We want the platform to be effective not just for you know, pharmaceutical companies and academic medical centers, but for small research nonprofits, academics, um, et cetera. And so one of our key goals has been to take a platform, which is in fact a large scale data warehouse with an analytical uh, uh, toolbox, and make that accessible uh, for you know, even the smallest nonprofits. And one of the things we'll hear about through the course of this meeting, and I'll, I'll start by pointing out today, um, is one of the, the, the early adopters of version 1.2 is the Michael J. Fox Foundation. And Michael J. Fox is really focused on using Transmart as a collaborative platform to more effectively collaborate using their data. And to me, that is really the ultimate um, uh, approach that we want to facilitate with this, this platform. We also want to align and grow a vibrant developer network uh, as we look over the past 12 months and what's happened with 1.2, we've had an incredibly vibrant, active, engaged developer group. It's grown substantially, and we want to continue to grow that, to support that, et cetera. So you'll notice in the meeting that we have going uh, now, we have uh, two hackathons that are occurring, and you'll hear more details about those in a second. And then finally, we want to reduce those barriers to entry. So um, I don't know how many of you tried to use Transmart uh, two or three years ago. I did. Mm -hmm. um, yeah. And that was, a, well, you, we all remember that, right? You, you're all veterans. Um, with 1.2, I was able to download a virtual machine image to my MacBook Air, fire it up, point a browser at it, and run. It took me about 30 minutes. That's lowering the barriers. <laughs> and that's the kind of thing that I think we really want to focus on doing, is that we really can make that happen. So these have been the key goals of the foundation, and, and they really translate in what we want to accomplish uh, at this meeting. But we brought you all together um, to do this because a real focus of making this happen is community. And community is something that doesn't just happen, it's something you have to make happen. It's something you have to participate in to make it work. And the fact that you've all come here to Michigan, you know, from Europe, from Asia, from across the US, really shows that that energy of activation is there. And what I hope we do over the next three days is really continue to grow and build this community. But the charge I'll take to you is when you leave here, you know, go out and bring other members to this community. This is the core of the community, but we need to grow this community to really reach out. We are very much in the early adopter stage for this platform and this approach, but it's the community. It's you, each one of you out there that's going to bring in the next adopters, the next end users, the next uh, developers and contributors to this platform. So back to, to Sherry's slide, you're going to see the slide a lot because we're focused on the 1.2 launch. Um, we really did go through as a community and pull these pieces together. Uh, we were able to build a, a whole developer community around bringing these together. We had sponsorship from major companies, et cetera, in doing that. And uh, we were able to successfully deliver a platform that I think most of us you know, felt was, was probably an objective that was too difficult to do. Uh, but in fact, we not only did it, we exceeded expectations. We brought in more than we thought we could bring in. You know, the reason to prioritize things is to be able to do and focus your resources on things that you can get done and to decide what you're not going to do. Uh, and the fact that we were able to work through all of these meant that we, in fact, overachieved what we were anticipating. Um, we'll talk a lot about the development activities. I'm not going to go through those in, in great detail here. Um, you're going to see a lot of things here. I really want to focus on the people that contributed uh, and the organizations that contributed overall. Uh, but all this breaks down into a, a plan. Uh, in fact, you, you know, uh, things don't, we don't achieve goals by taking random acts, right? Um, what we have to do is have a plan. 
And the foundation's three-year plan has been to grow and sustain the foundation, the community, and the platform, uh, to focus on geographical centers and the fact that we have representatives here from across North America, Europe, and Asia, uh, is really focusing on building those geographic centers of excellence. Uh, to ensure the quality and usability of, of content and services, we're gonna focus really well on this meeting, a lot on content. Brian taking the leadership with the content committee. Um, I think one of the key things now that we have the 1.2 platform is how do we build the content base that we can all share and work on together and, and find the right ways to share that. And then finally, to grow the foundation membership and community. Uh, this is really a key goal um, the, for the foundation to be successful and to continue on its path, we need to grow. And that is the, the charge I, I give to each of you is to help us do that growing. So Brian, okay. I'll turn it to you. Yeah, let me have that now. See if you can that. make that work. Yeah, yeah okay, good. <laughs> Okay, at the high level, I mean, we'll, we'll get into the high level goals for a minute and just they're, they're more engagement and interaction. The thing that impressed me by going back, Sherry, and looking at the Paris meeting was just how much work was done. And how, you know, and, and Keith raced through that slide, uh, but, you know, uh, um, but I, I think it's, uh, you know, all this momentum that led to the launch and now to the second annual meeting was really established at the Paris meeting. So the challenge for us, the major challenge of this meeting is you know, uh, coming up with enough you know, detailed specification of where we wanna take the foundation you know, across the three C's so that we can um, have this level of activity. So at our third meeting, which will be held in Europe, we're still talking about the location, we can come back and say, look at all the things that we did. We grow the foundation, we grew the membership, we increase the functionality, we're on the road to 2.0, we've got a 1.3, whatever. These things have to be really planned out here. And so this is not one of those meetings that's just kind of passive. It's very active and engaging, and ultimately our responsibility is to come up with a plan. And so um, A number one, you know, you've looked at the word diagrams, you've heard it, you see it, you know it. Let's capture the diversity of this group. It's special, it's unique, and it, it, can, it is an engine for change. And uh, we, we are in a fantastic position to use this engine to continue to grow and have an impact. Um, all of us need to be uh, engaged in the foundation planning and uh, execution. Why? Because we're the foundation. This is, you know, we're the members, you know? And, 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 and it's not, you know, kind of a, a spectator sport. It's, uh, you know, Gil and I have this friend, Don Detmer, who used to run the American Medical Informatics Association. He used to say informatics is a contact sport, okay. and it is. Uh, you know, uh, we've had a wonderful co-development focus, and we'll continue that. And EK and Case and Terry and Peter and the big team, it's been absolutely fabulous, but Jay, leading the way on the code committee. That will continue. But uh, we've got community and content that have to pick up the pace. And we're absolutely, so, so please uh, vote with your feet and spread out the energy across these three committees and help us uh, you know, achieve the objectives and the goals and the uh, fo foci that um, Keith just mentioned. I've, uh, I've said this 100 times, but that word, the D word, is ultimately where we're going. This is not about talk, it's about action, and the, deliver, the plan for milestones and deliverables has to be there in our 3C uh, sessions, in our hackathons, which uh, you know, will be, uh, Jay will come up here and tell us about in a minute. Um, this, the S word, sustainability. We are, we are still a startup that's growing to sustainability. We've got a lot of work to do there. All of us are committed to that, uh, you know, at the management team, at the board level. Uh, you know, we want to spread that uh, commitment just to every single person that's in this room. And, uh, you know, hey, listen, uh, let's establish some new collaborations, you know. Uh, you know, it, it, nose to the grindstone and work and just churning out things like that Diego, Diego Rivera piece of mural. You know, let's have some fun, too, and establish some new collaborations and make some new friendships. This is a great place. You know, people have selected, self-selected to be here for a reason. We all like the same kinds of things, so let's, in, let's enjoy ourselves and our time together. We've got a neat reception to kick that off tonight. Yep. 
okay, this is the practical level, you know? Uh, you know, we, we, we will develop plans for growing the community in its three C's and in, in the engagement and also the membership in the, in the foundation. We will enhance the roadmap. Uh, you know, we have looked just as uh, Paris delivered the 1.2 uh, roadmap, which is absolutely critical. I mean, we've got all these now omics and bioinformatics capabilities that we didn't have before. It was the dream. Let's uh, establish the priorities and the roadmap for continued energy on the development focus. We've got a great development team. Uh, you know, uh, many of us, I know Michael and I and Keith, and you know, we all talked about the 2.0. It's going to get into a serious conversation here. And we've got, uh, you know, leaders uh, from uh, Deloitte and many other places and key um, sites, uh, Pfizer, Sanofi, and all, Takeda. You know, you get into trouble when you start mentioning names. You're going to forget somebody. You know who you are. We need it. We want to make uh, sure that uh, you know, we are developing something that is standardized, has the appropriate APIs. You know, one of the discussions that Gil and I had with Zach Kahani a couple weeks ago, and Paul's got some neat announcements that I'll let him make, is that uh, the interoperability between I2B2 and all its functionalities that continues to grow through its BD2K phase is absolutely you know, shareable and interoperable with Transmart. There's, there's, a, uh, there's a commitment from Harvard on that. There's got to be a commitment from us. And it has to do with uh, making sure the architecture for that 2.0 is just right to capture the spot fires in the I2B2. And we've got uh, Open Clinica as was one of our keynotes, uh, these services into the platform. Um, you know, uh, we're going to hear about uh, and develop plans and um, launch this uh, Transmart Foundation Certification Certified Program. You know, and this is just having to do with everything that we do uh, in terms of the platform. So it's, it's really, you know, uh, at a level where people can actually trust it and use it effectively and uh, that it's checked out and ultimately, as we move to 2.0, you know, validatable. And that's a, you know, it's kind of a dirty word, but it's a, it's a word we need to respect because we're doing research that's on the way, a discovery research that goes into pipelines, and it needs to be that um, good a code base, and we can do it. And, uh, you know, Michael is here as our uh, VP of the marketplace, and uh, we have uh, the opportunity. One of the things that's absolutely cool about Transmart is that, um, you know, groups like, uh, historically, uh, Thomson Reuters and uh, Perk and Elmer, which uh, is uh, it will be announced, uh, they're they're changing their status and membership. Uh, Rudy is responsible for this, you know, and all the other service providers, Rancho Biosciences, uh, Cognizant, uh, you know, their 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 precision to build a uh, Deloitte, uh, you know, Converge Health, position to build a sustainable ecosystem in the market. So this isn't, you know just, uh, you know, dependent on government funds, not just dependent on, uh, uh, you know, membership, but uh, the, uh, uh, the, uh, the diversity of the ecosystem that sustained us is actually in that marketplace. And, you know, unless you uh, focus in on that, and it was one of your goals, uh, you know, and make a plan to capture that effectively and engage, uh, we will not see success. So um, from the high level and the practical level, uh, you know, this is the first set of goals that uh, we're putting out at the beginning of the meeting. And certainly at the end, we'll be um, going back to these goals and seeing how that we did. And I'll turn it back to Keith for any last words there. Yeah, and not, I'll just go back and emphasize uh, the need for you to be in, involved and engaged in the 3C activities that we're doing tomorrow. Um, we have a board of directors that really helps us in terms of setting strategy and execution and identifying the right fundraising approaches uh, to, to build and grow the foundation. And uh, we meet once a quarter. We're meeting here today at noon. Uh, we'll meet again in January. And at that meeting, uh, the three C chairs, um, the co-chairs, will all be presenting to the board the outcomes of what happens here tomorrow. Um, and so it's really critical if you want your voice to be heard to participate in those, those efforts, to, to not just do that one time here uh, while we're at uh, meeting together, but also through you know, bringing these groups together um, as we go through the year um, before we get together again next year in, in Europe. Uh, but it's really important that you get actively engaged and that you, you know, have your voice be heard there. Uh, and that's 
the, the key aspect for the foundation is to make sure that we're listening to the community, listening to what's happening, and that we also get that information to our board to help steer us in that direction. So I, I hope you'll all do that and take that seriously. I'm looking forward to a great meeting. Uh, we have a, a lot of good stuff happening today and tomorrow. Um, and I hope everyone sticks around uh, through Thursday. We, we finished the meeting uh, with our first uh, foundation training session at the end of our Thursday uh, program. So I know a, a number of you have signed up for that, but uh, it's going to be a great, uh, a great kickoff for that as well. So thank you for coming. And uh, Okay, thank you, Keith and uh, Kevin. I think we're right on time for the next uh, talk uh, presentation on the hackathon component of our meeting. Like, okay. So the hackathon is uh, one of the standard programs in our annual meeting. This year has no uh, no uh, exception. We will have our hackathon. So Jay and myself will talk a bit more about hackathon. Uh, this year is slightly different uh, with the previous year hackathon. Usually hackathon is a building systems and we probably will implement some functions and probably we will work together on planning some new functions. But this year is different. Uh, this year, we will, Jay will tell you about uh, uh, the hackathon contents we already published. It's not too much to do with uh, enhanced system, but really talking about two things. One is uh, building the ecosystem around the systems and how to incrementally enhance the system without touching the core system. It's really coming from our wonderful release of this API, which is how to use it. The second one is really uh, how to uh, explore the potential functions of the systems. And I, so the, the background. So we had this uh, transfer now. Uh, there's many ways to think about the one point achievement. From my point of view, the one point achievement is really did a couple of things. One is the unified code. So at least we have no have a consistent and uniform view about what is the transmart, the one system. And the second one is, uh, I think, thanks to a lot of people who work, particularly the Have, and we actually build a very nice RESTful API. So the build API, the purpose is really to make the system really become a, a plug-in based. So you can extend the system without keeping changing the software. So this is really a very key milestone of the development. And then the third one is we certainly starting to have a reliable code and to actually for sustainable development. But with all these features, right, now we lay down a foundation for building our, 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 our future. So I mean, we have to bear in mind, right, building the software is not the goal. The goal is use software to serve the community, right? The, really the key success of a software is not how much version you released, is how a version be used broadly and generate the impact, right? So therefore, this hackathon and the development is largely based on this belief. So with this feature, we will now have a chance to build a sustainable roadmap for further development into standard platform and have incremental, modular, as well as continued development pathway. So that was the thinking. So the hackathon focus, right? Number one, towards a lean transmart. You, you know, my life experience, right? You better keep yourself lean before getting too fat, right? So that is exactly what we're thinking about it. So we build a lean transmart. What I mean, the core system small, but actually have a rich ecosystem. The second one, the enhanced chart with the plugin and workflows. That's leading to incremental and the modular development build a transmart ecosystem, and explore the existing functionality. It, it would be pretty sad. You have a one function inside the transmart, and not, not, not too many people know it. It's not because they're useless. It's because you don't really know. That's also a not quite a scenario. So there's one, a lot of example we are now working and thinking this way. There's a good example here is how to enhance the transmart function and really use existing uh, plugins and the API. So this is the one of very interesting Etrex work 
done by the University of Luxembourg with the team here, uh, with uh, Serge and uh, Weiko and uh, Vataka, right? And they, you can ask them. They built in a couple of days a workflow implement that reproduced the transmart GWAS function, but extend it to a much more flexible way to actually allow you to do a de novo uh, SNP analysis. Just by write, use API, and use the Galaxy plugin. So you can see Transmart 1.2 still stay the same, but the functionality can be enhanced really by writing workflows and by using the API plug an external function. So that's for this reason, and Jay designed these two very exciting uh, uh, hackathon functions. And one is really do the workflows use API and Galaxy like the like the workflow did by the Luxembourg people. The other one is activate one of the very important function. How many people use the sample uh, explorer? Oh, yeah, now look, there's <laughs> only one. Yeah. So what we did is we integrate his sample explorer code into the transmat now and let people to use it and let people to actually enhance this particular function, which is now, we believe, is very useful. So by this, I leave to Jay to explain this one. So, you can hear me. Uh, actually, I'll, I'll, I'll just keep. Oh, thanks. Let me let me just keep it simple. So I'm I'm from Pfizer. We've been Transmart users for a couple of years, and Yike and I also co-lead Etrix, which is an IMI program for uh, translational research data management. And at Pfizer, we've when one of my goals for this year was to really bring Transmart from just basic data management for translational research and actually bring analytic components in and make it really sing for the scientists who are my customers, the scientists who are customers for, for Etrix. And that's actually lagged a little bit. We focus so much in taking all these different branches, all these capabilities and pulling them together that one of the that that goal is kind of lagged for me, and I think now we're in a position to do this and really turn Transmart, again, as DK says, from what is a data management system into something that is a data analytic suite and a tool set that can really sing for our, for our customers, for, for yourselves. Um, in addition, I actually, Venkata had showed me the work that he's done, which I think is, is really extraordinary. Um, GWAS is very close to our heart. We implemented that a, a couple of years ago. We provided that as 1.2. And now Venkata has just summary statistics and, and Manhattan plots, interactive Manhattan plots. Venkata has provided a workflow where you can go from genotypes to a Planck-like algorithm, run your logistic regression, produce your summary statistics, and now those are, can be available in Transmart interactively for people who have that kind of interest. And this is what we want to grow, and this is how we want to decorate Transmart with these, with these types of analytics. I think Sample Explorer is something that, when we're looking for hackathon topics, something that Yanni Pandas, who's part of EK's group at Imperial and part of Etrix, had raised, this is something that's really, really valuable, and it's the sleeper part of Transmart that almost no one has used, with the exception of Paul, who's been able to, to take that component of Transmart and really make it useful from a sample logistics perspective for, for Harvard. And what a great opportunity that is to provide that to other groups that may need this kind of lightweight sample logistics capability. And that was one of the things that wasn't on the list for 1.2. And we have an opportunity to actually bring, bring that in and have this other, I think, really enabling capability. And that's where we're gonna focus on. And I will, will say one other thing. The folks at UMichigan, uh, Evo, who I haven't met yet, but folks on Brian's team, one of the things that they would like to do, and I think to some extent have already done, is to link Transmart with the laboratory neural imaging at USC with the imaging pipelines that they provide. And we wanted that as one of the hackathon topics, but we were kind of, to some extent, a little bit stymied trying to understand whether or not everyone could use the data because uh, they wanted to use the, the Alzheimer's disease neural imaging set. But that's going to be going on as well. And I think, so there are really three topics here. And if people who are interested in the Lani workflows or interested in, in image analysis and bringing that component as part of Transmart, might want to talk with Evo and the team at the University of Michigan and maybe look over their shoulders as they're, they're doing their thing. 
So I'll leave it there, but I think we have two really great topics for the hackathon, two things that are tractable, two things that are valuable, and, and a third from University of Michigan, which is especially for, for image management. Right, thank you. Thank you, yeah. So we have about 50 people. Oh, here we go. So we have about 50 people actually registered. Oh, I'm sorry. Yeah, so there's a quite a, I think is a building this two hackathon case is a wonderful purpose. The other one very important here now is really we learn the functions we already built API, for example, and we have a first, well, we have the developer here, but also the people who have first hand experience on building system using the API are now all in the in the team. And also we have uh, um, Ivan from the Harvard University is here. The, he intensively use this uh, uh, sample explorer. So therefore, we also have the people here and the code is already integrated. So now we can actually do the hackathon. There's a website here on talking about the code and talking about the preparation you need to do. It's all in the uh, community website. So hope you enjoyed hackathon and that I really get a lot out of it. Thank you.